Trey. What's up, Mr. Rob? How are you? I'm doing well, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'd like to thank you for taking this time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us explosive athletes over here in New Jersey. Uh, my pleasure. Hey, glad I can help out. You know, willing to do whatever I can, especially for a former who. So, hey, whatever you need, just let me know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'd just like to start by uh, maybe uh, letting you introduce yourself and kind of what your role and um, your job title is now. Cool. So, hello, everyone. So, my name is uh, Devon Robb. I'm the Associate Director of Football and Basketball Operations here at the Big Ten Conference Office. Um, before that, I was the Assistant Athletics Director for Academic and Student Athlete Affairs over at Loyola University for a year and a half. And then prior to being at Loyola, I was the Associate Director for Academic Advising at Northwestern University. I was there for about six years, five or six years. So been in athletics pretty much my entire career. Started off as an intern at the NCAA National Office. And uh, before that, I was you know, blessed to be the, the opportunity to be a student athlete on a football team at, at New York, University of Virginia with Mr. Trey, Trey right here, Mr. Tolliver. <laughs> And uh, just today, we're just going to, um, we, you know, some of our athletes are going through the recruiting process. And um, the reason that we're having this conversation is just to kind of uh, shed some light on some of the challenges that kids have going through that recruiting process. Cool. Sounds good. I'm glad to help out any way I can. You know, as, as a former student athlete, you know, I know the, you know the opportunity and the blessings it is to, to, to be able to go and play at, at Division One level, D2, or even D3. So... Whatever I could do to help student athletes get reach their dreams and take advantage of that opportunity, and most importantly, get that degree, I'm all about it. Hey, <laughs> get that degree. That's the most important part, right? Yes. So sir. we're just we're just gonna go through a couple questions that um that some of my kids um have asked uh, me asked me to ask you. Um, the first question is just what kind of things can kids do to prepare for the recruiting process in high school? Um, I say you know number one is academics. You know, I, I don't care how great of an athlete you are. Um, if you don't have the grades, then you know, it's going to be hard for any coach to get you into that school. And chances are you won't be able to get into there. I'm going to tell you know, everyone that for me, you know, I was you no know, blessed and fortunate, fortunate enough to play at UVA. But truth be told, there were a lot of better athletes, you know, who played on my high school team. The thing is, is that I had you no know, grades and they really didn't. You know, so a lot of them weren't able to go to a lot of those um, top programs and things like that. So I would say doing well in school is, is key. Um, even if you're a freshman or a sophomore, start off early. If you are a freshman or sophomore, you had a bad start, um, you know, it's never too late. You know, so I say that's, that's number one. Um, two, I would say definitely try to get out to as many camps as you can. You know, give those coaches the opportunities to see you, you know, whether it's football, you know, field hockey, lacrosse, whatever you're doing, get to those camps because when you, you can actually get in front of a coach, I've seen plenty of times where, you know, a student might not have been in on a coach's radar, but then after they leave that camp, the coach is like, oh, yeah, we definitely have to bring the student back to this campus or, or, or even offer them. So I would say, you know, that, that's, that's another thing. And two, you know, the third one I say is you know, make sure you make you know, the right decisions. Uh, you know, when coaches are, are, are recruiting pr prospective student athletes, you know, they want to make sure that the person that they're bringing in is not someone who's going to cause trouble nor, or you know, get into any issues and things like that. You know, so make sure that you know, you know, they're respectful. Um, I say the more you can say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, no, your visits to everyone, that, that's great. The more positive things that your teachers and folks in the community and, and, uh, and things like you know, everyone else has to say about you, your coaches have to say about you, that's definitely a positive. You know, so I say the academics, uh, go to the camps, you know, definitely do well, uh, you, know, you know, athletically as well. And, and when you're respectful and make smart decisions, that definitely helps you, helps you be on, stay on top. So I know you mentioned, uh, you know, getting on the coach's radar. Uh, one of the things that we encourage our uh, student athletes to do is make their recruiting profile and to get that information out to the college coaches as well as, as, well as um, submitting the, those uh, questionnaires that the uh, colleges send you and the, and the coaches send you. Is that, is that something you think that's important also? I think it's good to do that, you know, because that helps, you know, helps you stand out. It allows coaches to, to learn more about you and, and see more about you. Um, one of the things that I know that coaches are looking for, you know, if, if you do uh, make those profiles, let's say you have a website with some of the game film on there, um, make sure you at least have one or two full games on there. You know, a lot of folks like to do these highlight tapes and things like that. The coaches are like, hey, a highlight tape is great, but your highlight tapes are always going to be you know, your best plays from all these different games. When they can see right. how you play 
over an entire game that really changes things. That allows them to really see, hey, what type of um, player you are, you know? So I would say if you do upload some of your footage onto the website, you know, you could do a highlight uh, tape that's good, but also make sure you at least have one or two full games on there. Okay. What what do you think, in your opinion, um, with dealing with student athletes is more important? Uh, do college coach or colleges look at more the SAT or the ACT? Honestly, it really depends on the, on the university. You know, I, I would say you know, growing up on on the East Coast, for me, a lot of the schools on the East Coast were looking at you know SATs at the time. Um, now, for me being out here in the Midwest, a lot of schools out in the Midwest are looking at ACTs. So I say for that, I would say what I would advise all those students or you know, high school students is to look at the schools you're thinking about going to and go and see what see what they uh, what they look for. If they you know say they, they prefer the ACTs, then that's what you should take. If they say they prefer the SATs, that's what you should take. Hey, if you're looking at schools that looking at both. Um, or you might have a group of schools that might prefer the SATs and another group of schools that might prefer the, SAT, the SATs. I'm sorry for you, but you might want to do both, you know, or at least, you know, reach out to the, reach out to the coaches and see what the coaches say. Um, you know, you know Trey, as, as you well know, for the University of Virginia at the time, you know, they had the SAT and the SAT too. Um, not right. that many schools are asking for the SAT too, but in order to get there, you had to take the SAT too. So you, I did what I had to do to get to the school I wanted to get to, you know, so you just have to right. make those type of sacrifices. But also, I also would say, you know, make sure you reach out to those coaches because those coaches, they'll give you, a, they'll definitely let you know as well that, like, hey, you know, you don't have, need to take both. You just take the ACT, you'll be fine, or just take the SAT you'll be, and you'll be fine. And they also give you a good idea of what scores you, you should shoot for. Um, so definitely make sure you're in communication with those coaches and they'll let you know. Okay, awesome. Um, what kind of classes should a uh, student athlete be taking um, throughout their career to get to a Division One college? Should they be going into the, the lower side, or should they be shooting for those AP courses and those advanced honor courses to get to that um, to get to that Division One level? I say, well, the, the, one of the main things is make sure you're at least taking those courses that you know that you need to take in order to be cleared by the eligibility center. You know, so take your core courses, the math, the English, the sciences. I think it might even require foreign language. So take those courses. Now, in regards to AP versus standard, um, or you know, if you can do AP and you can succeed in AP courses, then definitely do the AP courses. Um, but if you know, if you do AP courses and the best you can do is get C's, but you, you get B's and A's and non AP courses, then do the non AP courses. You know, you don't have to be out there trying to oppress people because, so yeah, you might be an AP, be in all these AP classes, but if you got like a 2.0, 2.5, that might not be that great, you know. So I would say take the courses that, that you can do well in. You know, don't take the courses that you think is going to impress people because if you don't have that GPA, that's still going to be a struggle. Um, but at the same time, don't sell yourself short either. You know, challenge yourself. You know, so don't say, hey, I can't do the AP course. You probably can do it. At least try one and see how it goes. And if you do well in it, but no, then continue on that path. Okay. Now, do um, when you're when college co when colleges are looking at your course load is um, do they want, uh, do they, do they want to see that though? Do they want, they, do they want, uh, an AP course on that, co on that, um, on your site or on your, um, profile? Oh, don't get me wrong. I think the AP courses definitely help because it shows that, Hey, you know, that, you know, that you're, you're challenging yourself and that, you know, that you're doing well academically, you're taking some of the, the harder courses. Uh, those definitely help. Um, but like I mentioned, though, you said, you know, I know sometimes I've seen students that had AP courses, they might have all D's in AP courses. Like, that's not okay. going to help you. You know what I'm okay. saying? It's, it's like, you know, if you're going to do well in AP courses, definitely do the AP courses. Um, but if you're taking AP courses and you get all C's and you have a 2.0, compared to you're taking non-AP courses, you could get that 3.335, then, then do what's going to get you that 3.335. Because, you no, know, don't okay. do it if it's not going to help your GPA. All right. So, so just basically about the GPA. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then, like I said, now taking those because the admissions boards, they're going to want to see those AP courses, so that's good. But like I said, mm -hmm. I mean, it's all about if you can do well in them. Because if you're not going to do well in them, then they're going to see them like, okay, well, yeah, she's taking AP history, but she got a D, you know, or she got a D okay. or, you know, or got a C minus, you know. So now let's say you took one or two AP courses and you got the C minus, but also the, you were taking some other courses, the standard courses, you did well in those. They can still take that, take that into account as well. But if you're taking all AP courses and you're just getting straight C minuses, that might not be a good thing. Okay, that, I guess that to my to my point was, do uh, colleges uh, weigh more on the GPA or the SAT? And I guess with just because you took an AP class doesn't really matter when it comes down to the GPA. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, like honestly, a lot of schools they have a sliding scale. 
and so and so much like NCAA looks at at, the, looks at at that as well. So you might not have a great GPA, but you have a high SAT score, ACT score that can help you out. Vice okay. versa, you might not have the strongest SAT or ACT score, but you might have a high GPA. You know, so schools and admissions, you know, the admission boards, they look at everything. They even look at you know what what type of school you're going to. Um, you know, if you're going to a school that's not known, um, that's one thing. If it's not accredited, if you're going to a school that's not accredited, you, you want to look into going to a different high school because that's going to hurt you right there. Um, if you're going to a school that's not known for challenging its students, you nor know, not known for producing students to go to great uh, to, uh, to universities and high school, uh, colleges, things like that, that might hurt you as well. You know, so make sure you know that um that, that they look at everything. But I say you know if you can have in regards to the GPA or the SAT. It's really, it can go, you know, if you, it's kind of like I said, the sliding scale. So I would say the best thing is to make sure you talk with the coaches and the coaches can give you the best idea of you know, what, what they're looking for at that university because what Ohio State's looking for might be totally different than what Penn State's looking for, you know, okay. and what UCLA is looking for might be totally different than what Rutgers is looking for, Rutgers is looking for you know. Okay. So when you're in communication with these coaches, they can let you know because, like, I've known – Students that yeah they might not have gone got to one university because of their standards, but they got to another university and we got academic uh, scholarships on to the university. So it really depends on the different schools. So I say okay. communication, communication, communication. Just like you know, on, on the on the field or on, on the court, whatever sport you're playing, you got to communicate on there. I don't know, no, you can always make sure you communicate with the coaches because they'll definitely give you a good idea of you know of what, what what you need to do and make sure you do your research as well. Okay, um, now. With the regard to uh, going Division One, so you know all uh, you know just about every athlete wants you know dreams about going to Division One. Can you talk about some of the challenges that Division One athletes face um, as a freshman going into their uh, freshman year in college? Yeah, so I think you know one of the things is that you know coming from high school, you know, not, oftentimes those who are going to Division One, you, you're probably the best athlete on your team. You know, so you know you you're you know all district all. State and all those things, you, you, you're you a great athlete, you know, and then all of a sudden you get to the D1 level and you're not the best person, you might not be the best person on the team anymore, you know, you, 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 let's say you might get registered, so those, those are some of the things that, that, that you know, you, you have to press through, you're like, hey, I'm used to getting all this playing time, but now I'm sitting on the bench, I'm not going to play this year, uh, then you got, you know, you got used to the, to the time demands, because, you know, maybe in high school, depending on what high school you came from, you might not have had like a true strength and conditioning program. You no, know, but then when you get to the D1 level, you're gonna have coaches that you know they're gonna have you there working out and lifting. You know, five not mo, mo, most times five days a week. You know, unless you're in season. And when you're in season, you still might be going five days a week. You know, so it's those right. things. You know, it's it's really you know knowing that athletically. I'm not even talk about the academic side right now. Athletically, going to the D1 level, there's so much more to that. Um, but still, the athletes are bigger, faster, and stronger. You know, I know, like, for me, when I played, I was like, man, how in the world does this dude who's half my size, how is he beating me in this two-spot drill? Because he just had his hands in there faster. You know, it was quicker. So you got to, you know, pick up on those things. It's more of, you know, like, it's funny because I'm looking at you right now on the screen, but, you know, it's watching film. You know, it's those, those, those type of things that, you that, you know, when you get to the D1 level, you might, you're probably, if you're not doing it in high school, you're going to need to take those things to, to another level. You know, doing things on your own. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you could just go ahead in high school and, you can just kick butt. You know, all you had to do was really go to practice and then go to the games. But when you get to the D1 level, it's probably going to take some more of you getting out to practice early and doing some, some drills by yourself or staying after practice, you know, or, you know, or, or getting some extra lifting sessions in, like I said, or watching film or sitting down with the coach and going over some things. That's what's going to help you help take you to the next level. Um, you know, I think and a lot of times when you look at a lot of these the, the Division One athletes across the country, I think a lot of them are probably athletically, you might have different ones who are skilled athletically, but the ones who really stand out are the ones who put the most work into it. You know, even for folks like, you know, you, you and I, you know, like we came in as walk-ons and we were put on scholarship because we put that work in, you know, and so right. I say that as well is don't, you know, whether you're on, you know, you're on a head counting sport like football, basketball, you know, women's volleyball, those who get full scholarships, or you're on a partial sport like, you know, field hockey or lacrosse or, or baseball, those things is don't allow, you know, someone to think of, just because someone is on full scholarship but they have 90% scholarship but only got 20, don't allow that, allow that to make you think, oh, they're better than me. No, I mean, you can be just as good as they are. And oftentimes, though, you can go ahead and outshine. You know, I'm sure that's one of the things that I know, I know you got when you're playing. I got the same thing when people found out, like, hold up, you're a walk-on? Because right. your skills on the field, on the court, doesn't necessarily, you know, show what your, what your, what your aid might be. You know, so it's, it's on you to really go out there and shine and show folks what, what you can really do. And now, now from the academic standpoint, you know, I, I know a lot of um, – 
you know, a lot of student athletes now who are in high school, when they get to college and you want to be at that division one level, you know, you got to go to study hall, you know, you got to go to class, you got to check in and then you got to do all that when you're tired. You know, can you elaborate a little bit about that? You know, you've been working with a lot of athletes and, you know, no one likes going to study hall. But, you know, when you get to college, that's a very important that's a very important step is being a student athlete. Exactly, man. You hit the nail on the head, Trey. Like one of the things is that, you know, with these athletic demands, it takes it to another level. So you're pro probably more tired from practice than you ever have been before. You know, you're going to have time for off-season workouts. You might be waking up and having a 6 a.m. workout, you know. So then you go from your 6 a.m. workout, and then you got to go to class. Um, then you might even have to come back and do practice and things like that again, you know. So it's one of those things that, hey, when you're in college, you don't have mom and dad or, you know, grandpa or somebody at home saying, hey, did you do your homework? You know, when you, when you get back to your dorm room, you're there by, us, by yourself, you know, or you can you can come to study hall and do study, you know, you go to study hall, but at the same time, but a lot of schools, they might not have somebody at the end of study hall to check and see whether or not you did your work, you know, so as a division one athlete or as a college student, uh, you, there's a lot of accountability on yourself, you know, and one of the things, <laughs> it's funny because you, 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 you remember this quote, you know, our coach used to always say the worst thing you can do in life is fool yourself. Well, it's right. so true is that you, know, you, you gotta, you know yourself. So if you know that, hey, you know, if I go back to my dorm room, I'm most likely going to get on my computer and go on Facebook or Twitter or watch TV or play Xbox, then it might not be good for you to go back to your dorm room. You know, it might be good. It would be best for you to go to the library, you know, or, or like go to study hall and those type of things. It's really like well, looking at, you know, what's the best schedule for you. Um, I always know I was working with student athletes. What we'll do is we'll have a weekly schedule and I have them write out their weekly schedule on paper, you know, so they'll see when they have class when they have lifting and practice and things like that. And then also have them write in, okay, when do you want to like study for the, for, for this class? Or like, when you want to get, get this paper done, you know, or you got these readings due this week. So when do you want to like, let's say read 15 pages, you know, on this day, maybe read 20 pages the next day, you know, so really doing those things because mm -hmm. as an athlete, you're gonna say, exactly, you know, so when you, when you do those things, as an athlete, you're going to say like, man, I don't have time to do anything. But when you put it on paper, if you got time to do things, you just got to you know, make sure you manage your time wisely. And that's one of the biggest things that, one of the biggest mistakes I made is that, you know, in high school, I was taking all the AP classes. I was, you know, playing football and basketball. I was on the student government, getting involved in the community, involved in my church. And I still had like a, you know, 3, 8, 4.0 GPA, you know, so I was like crushing it, you know. So I'm going on these recruiting visits and all these coaches saying, hey, no, no, time management is important. Time management is important. It's going in one ear and it's going out the other ear when I was, you know, being recruited because I'm like, hey, I got this. And I get to college, I'm like, whoa, it's a totally different thing, you know, because like I said, you know, let's say even when you go to class, um, well, you and I remember this, but some of these youngsters out there might not know, but let's say like Charlie Brown, you know, Charlie Brown in the class, when you got that teacher to go, wah, 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 you know, well, when you're, when you're in class, if it's, you're in the class that you're not a big fan of, it's going to be wah, 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 you know, so you got to really learn on how do you pay attention, or how do you take notes, because in high school, they're going to give you those worksheets and things like that, where you might just, you just be doing busy work every day in class. In college, you might get into a class where a professor won't put anything on the board, won't put any type of PowerPoint up. They'll just talk the entire time. And then you got to figure out what's important and what can I write down and what can I write down. You know, so it's really about learning those skills, um, you know, and pick up the skills that best, you know, that are best for you. And also, don't be afraid to ask for help. And I think that's one of the biggest areas where, um, you know, especially on the individual level, where a lot of athletes fall short on is because you did so well in high school and then you get to college and just think, hey, I got this, you know, it's not going to be anything. And then I say, if you do fall, start to, to struggle, you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm good, I'm all good, I don't need any help, no, I'll be straight. Next thing you know, you get your, you know, your fall semester ends, the fall quarter ends, you look at your grades, you're like, oh my goodness, you know, so ask yeah. for help. That, that's one of the great things, you know, especially you know, when you're at the D1 level or you know, depending on what schools you go to, a lot of these schools have academic advisors, tutors, and all those folks there to help you. You know, So make sure you go in there to you know, ask them for help. Say, hey, you know, I need some help with this math class. I need some help you know, with my writing skills or, or those type of things. You know, or or you know, talk to the professors. I mean, I can't tell you enough how many times, how many professors out there are willing to break their backs for you. But <laughs> you have to show them that you want that help. You know, you can't go right. in class and look, looking like this, you know, or those and all, or be texting and things like that. You have to show them that you're interested. Um, you know, like I, I, I heard a professor once tell a group of student athletes, he said like, hey, you know, if you got to go in there, you got to fake it, fake it. You know, so let's say if you're not a big math professor, I mean, you're not a big fan of math, you got to take a math class. I want you to you know, go in there and get your best, 
Halle Berry, Denzel Washington, you know, you know Sandra Bullock acting skills on and make that professor think that this math class is the best class in the world because when you show them that you're interested, they're going to help you out and they're going to work with you. You know, so once you get on the professor's good side, you got, you're, 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 you're in some, some, some good, a good position right there because I've seen mm -hmm. in plenty of cases where a student might not have did well on a test, but the professor has worked with them, you know, and said, hey, you know what? Come and send me for office hours, and we can go over this. You know, or you know, they say, hey, you didn't do so hot on this paper. Come see me, you know, so we, we can review this paper and things like that. So, and professors yeah. do that for all students, not just student athletes. But you got to show that interest. If you don't show them that interest, you know, you don't know. Go and put in that effort. They're like, okay, if you don't care, then why should I take that extra step to help you if you're not putting in there? You know, right. so ask for that. Um, like and I tell folks, you know, that all that help there is like a spotter. You go into the weight room. Like, Trey, I know you're strong, you know, you're like strong as an ox. But right now, if we go into the weight room, I, and I, we put 500 pounds in bench press bar, 600 pounds in bench press bar, I say, all right, Trey, go ahead and lift this three times. What you going to do? I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need some help. You're going to need some help. No, so I, I, when help. I get behind you, I, if I get behind you and say, all right, Trey, we're going to lift this. I lower it down on your chest. You push it up, I lift it with you. You feel more confident doing like that, right? Right. So I say, mm -hmm. you know, those are those advisors and everyone else in, you know, on campus, look at them as being your academic spotters, you know, so use that right. free help. And that's the best part about it, especially as a student athlete, it's all free. The mm -hmm. best price in America is free 99, you know, you can't beat it, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So tell everybody, you know, take advantage of it, and you'll be good. That's, that's what I usually tell my athletes too. There's two things in the world that you can control. That's attitude and effort. You have a good attitude, more people are going to be willing to help you. If you give out as much effort as you can, then people are going to notice that effort. And that's what's going to make you stand out amongst everybody else. You know, when you talk to a college coach, your attitude should be up. You should be smiling. You should be happy. You shouldn't be on your cell phone. You shouldn't be, you know, involved in another conversation because you're giving those people the time of the day and they're, and they're, trying, they're there to help you throughout that day. So that's why I always tell my athletes. I totally agree. Like I said, like the attitude and effort is definitely number one. Because even let's say you're on a recruiting visit, those coaches, with those like those coaches, will have you meet with different people, and then a lot of times after those meetings, they're gonna ask those folks you met with, hey, what did you think about this person? You know, so you mm -hmm. might be old, oh, you know, you might be all you know, chest up and everything meeting with the coach, and then you meet with an uh, academic advisor or professor or somebody, you might be like, like this. The coach is going to ask that, you know, because they want, like I said, like I said before, they want to know what type of student, or what type of player are they bringing in onto their team, or what to know. And hey, are you going to be one person in front of the coach and somebody totally different behind closed doors, or, or you know, when you're with other people? So their attitude and effort, you know, like I said, you no, know, whatever you do, that that name or or, you know, or that university, that that logo never comes off, you know. So that coach wants to make sure that they can trust you with that logo, with that name. Right. I like that. Um, and, and, and we'll just close it out, but, um, can you just give three, three, um, pieces of advice for student athletes who want to go to play at the division one level or division two or division three? What, what do you think, what do you think they, you know, the, the things that you could give them right now from your perspective of seeing and working with all these athletes that will help them get to where they want to be at one day? Cool. I said well, one of the things is let's say like let's look at, at the recruiting process. You no, know, I would say definitely make your list of the schools you want to go to, and visit mm -hmm. those schools. You no, know, I've seen so many people or students that went to a school just based off the name of a school or the location, and they never stepped foot onto that school until after they already signed the papers and all that. You know, visit the school because you want to make sure that you know this is some place you can see yourself going to. You know, because right. uh, you might get to the campus like oh this is nothing like I thought it would be. You know, so <laughs> right. any school you thinking you about thinking about going to. Visit that school. You know, when you visit the school, when you go on these recruiting visits, I know for me when I was being recruited, man, I was nervous. It seemed like, oh my goodness, I'm not like here I'm meeting this, this 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 head coach. Or let's say you know at the time we got Coach Grow, so Coach Grow had that huge Super Bowl ring on his finger. So I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. But as a prospective student athlete, you actually have more power than you think you do. You know, these schools are not, they're trying to you know, learn more about you. But if they really like you, they're also trying to sell the school to you. You know, so go in there, though, don't don't be nervous, but no, be confident. You know, any questions you have, ask those questions. You know, when you meet with people, whether it's the coaches or the academic advisors or the, the professors or anyone, ask those questions. Especially when you meet with the students with the players and student athletes that are currently on that college team, ask them everything. Because they're gonna really be real with you. You know, they're gonna tell you how the coach is, they're gonna tell you how classes is, they're gonna tell you how the social life is, they're gonna tell you how the dating life is. You know, they're gonna tell you those things because they know if they lie to you, 
and you decide to go to that school and find out what they say relies, you're gonna be upset. You might become might right. become a distraction to the team, you know. So like do those things and like when you come down to making that final decision about what school you wanna to go to, go with your gut. You know, I see okay. far too many students you know that chose a school because that's where you no know, mom and dad went to that school, you know, or that's where all their friends are going, you know, those type of things. Or the worst case scenario is they're dating somebody, so they're chasing after their boyfriend or girlfriend <laughs> because uh, they go to the school, you know, and I'm not yeah. Dr. Phil in, in any way, <laughs> but I tell you that 99.9% of the time, it's not going to work out anyway, you know? So if it's meant to happen, you could be going to school in California, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend could be going to school in Florida, and you'll still be, uh, stay together and get married if it's meant to happen, you know? But don't go to a school just because that's where they're going to, you know? Go with your gut. Your gut's going to tell you the best best place for you, you know? So that's on the recruiting front, you know? Like I said, I know I talked about this earlier, but I can't tell, tell you enough how important those grades are. You know, mm -hmm. uh, doing well academically in high school can set you up in so many ways. You know, I've seen a lot of people get turned down uh, from going to a school because they didn't have the grades. I've not once in my entire life ever seen somebody turn, get turned down because their grades are too good. Never. Right. I've never seen it, you know. And you just know, you don't understand how many times, how many doors open up for you when you do well academically. Because that takes less, you know, less of a challenge off, off, off of the coach. You're like, oh, wow, I can get this person in easily, you know. So, no, right. I can definitely look at it for brain them in, you know. So do that, especially if you can get, you know, let's say if you're not, you know, at a, playing a sport where you get a full scholarship, you know, like a head county sport, it might be partial, like 40, 50, or something like that. Then it also mm -hmm. opens up the doors for you to get academic scholarships, you know, depending on how your grades mm -hmm. are. And if you go right. to a school on a full, full academic ride, you got it made there, you know, because then yeah. it really doesn't really, you know, you, you can say, you know what, I love this sport, but no, I, I, I'm burnt out. If you're on an academic ride, Cool. You can drop that sport and keep on going to school, but I have to not have to worry about anything financially, you know. So mm -hmm. those academic things are, are key. And then number three is just just make smart decisions. Um, you no, know, right now we're living in an age where you no, know, you no, know, everything, you know, people are always accessible. You know, like you can mm -hmm. always get to me about through a cell phone or you know, go on, on online computers and things like that. And now with these camera phones, you no, know, you, you just have to be careful what you do. You know, right? Um, I tell I tell like all my student athletes. And I'm so thankful and grateful that they really didn't have like camera phones wasn't that big of a thing when I was in college or you know right. Facebook wasn't that big of a thing when I was in college because I'm not gonna lie like I'll be transparent like I made bad decisions I wasn't always making the right decisions but they couldn't easily take a picture and put it on Facebook or Twitter or things like that you know so right. I say you know definitely make sure you make smart decisions you know and, and be and be mindful of you know you know what what your goals are you know be mindful of what your goals are be mindful of what you or who you represent. You know, you don't only represent, it's not only just about yourself, it's about your family, you know, it's about your friends, it's about, you know, your teammates, and those type of things. So be mindful of that. Um, you know, don't go on Facebook or Twitter telling all your business, you know, or, or, or right. you know, if you're mad about something, calm down. Take about 10 to 15 minutes to calm down, really think about, do I really want to go post this? Because once you put it out right. there, you might delete it, but too late, it's already out there, you know, and there yeah. are a lot of coaches who are going on Facebook and Twitter to see what are these potential student athletes doing? They will know, hey, what type of pictures do they have up? So even for your profile picture, put something that's mm -hmm. respectable. You know, right. don't put anything on there with alcohol in it. Don't put anything on there like we're doing something that you know that hey, you know, as I heard one person say, if you can't show it to your grandma, don't put it on Facebook. You know, so don't put it put, put something on there that's gonna like you know, especially on your profile picture, and they say, oh wow, like. I don't think I want to bring this person in, you know, because sometimes people might say, hey, well, Trey, it ain't going to matter. My profile is, you know, my, my profile is, is private, so only my friends can see those pictures. You know, especially if my, I got a good profile picture, but everything else might not be great, but it's only accessible to my friends. All right, so let's say I'm your friend on, on Facebook, Trey, and you got a, a crazy picture on there, and I decide to share it. So I share it on my page, or I share it on Twitter. Boom. Now, everybody who's my friends, they can now see that. You know, so right. I said, make, make, making those smart decisions, making sure you're connected with the right people. Um, if there are people that, that you're friends with and they're not making making right decisions, I know it might be hard, but you, you know, you, you got to let let them go. You know, because you, you know you don't want to allow their decisions or their actions. You begin you end up getting caught with them, and then that throws your future down the drain. You know, mm -hmm. um, and you might not say, I know like there are some little folks you might not say, hey, I don't want to cut them loose completely. I understand that, but you got to separate yourself. Um, you know, right. because I also know there's also a saying that says you can tell a lot about a person by the people that they associate themselves with. 
you know, mm-hmm. so if a, you know, so if a coach sees you know, or someone or an employer sees that you're always hanging around the wrong group of people, that might make them concerned about what are you going to do when they bring you on the team or bring you on a job and things like that. So those are things. So do well academically. Um, no, no, raise those campuses you think about going to for uh, for school, and then just make smart decisions. Nice. Well, I appreciate it, Rob. We'll um, we'll let you get back to your day, man. I thank you for all your help and advice, man. And hopefully, we'll connect in the future. All right. My pleasure. Like I say, anything I can do to help you out, let me know. Uh, good luck to all the uh, prospective student athletes that are watching this video. Um, hey, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to. The only one who, who, who can keep you from doing it is you. You know, so hey, I'm a big fan of this this, this man right here, Mr. Tolliver. So I'm a big fan of his. You know, he's he, he's he was an awesome guy back in college. You know, he's doing great things. So it's explosive sports and all that. So hey, listen to what he says. Hey, we're saying these things not 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 because we're crazy. Hey, we've been there. We we've done it. You know, so. We're just exactly. trying to help. And that and your and your perspective is so good because you connect with so many student athletes on a daily basis. And and that's what it's really about is just being able to connect the student athletes to those other student athletes to get them in that same situation that they're in, which is at a college campus of their choice. Yes, sir. And say once you get there, hey, you still gotta get the grades too. So hey, bust your butt in the, in the classroom because you and I, hey, we haven't put on shoulder pads or helmets in a long time. But the one thing that they, they that they can't take away from us is, is that is that degree, you know, and that degree is gonna go from wherever I go, you know. So when people see that that university that UVA degree on, on my uh, resume, that means something, you know. And, and I tell folks take advantage of those, those opportunities, you know. Get outside your comfort zone. Um, they'll meet people and talk to people you might not normally talk to. I come from a small town in Virginia that you know it's like a middle class town, but me going to UVA was exposed me to a lot of different things, you know. So I took advantage of that which led to me getting the internship at the NCAA, which led to me getting a job at Northwestern, which led to me getting my master's at Northwestern, which led to me going to the Loyola, and now I'm here. You know, So it all started for me making, taking advantage of the opportunity that was given to me you know, back when I was a student athlete you know, at, at UVA. You know, So it's not about you know, always you know, going professional in sports, although you can say, I guess, in some case, in some way, I, I did do that. But you, know, you might not know play, play in the league, but make sure you take advantage of those opportunities because the people that you'll be rubbing shoulders with on those college campuses are going to be future doctors, future lawyers, future business owners, you know, you know, future, you know future senators and things like that. So make sure that you take advantage of those resources because you just never know. You know, if they don't look like you, that's okay. You know, talk to them. Right. You know, because those connections can really lead to something, something great. You know, and, and even if it's just all about those friendships and really learn, learning more about yourself, that's what you're gonna re- remember most about college as well. Exactly. All right, Rob. We thank you, man. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good, sir. Hey, have a good one. You be blessed. And uh, hey, make sure y'all watch the Big Ten basketball and uh, basketball tournaments coming up in March too. First week of March is uh, basketball. We, we will. <laughs> Second week of March is man's basketball. That's my last shameless plug. I'm out of here. <laughs> Take it easy. Be good. Be good. Love you too.